And with me this morning on the program, the Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister, Josh Frydenberg. Uh, Josh Frydenberg, you've heard what Chris Bowen had to say there. Why doesn't Arthur Sinandinas give a full explanation to the Senate? It, uh, that does not necessarily uh, stop the work of the, the ICAC. He could do that this morning, could he not? Well, look, this is just parliamentary partisan tactics by the Labor Party. There is no evidence, Kieran, of any wrongdoing against Arthur Sinodinas. He has said he will cooperate with the ICAC, he will participate in its hearings, and he will be fully vindicated. The point about Arthur Sinodinas is that he is a person of utmost integrity, someone of intellectual depth, someone of great common sense and decency, somebody who's had a great record of service to the government as well as to the Howard government as well when he was chief of staff. Look, if I was in the trenches, the one person I'd like to have with me is Arthur Sinodinas, and we'll be with him in the trenches here. But there is no evidence whatsoever against Arthur Sinodinas. That, that all might be 100% true, what you've said there. It, it could well be. Well, that's right. But if it's the front page of every paper, mm -hmm. and he's the subject of the assistant uh, counsel at the ICAC raising questions, not exonerating Arthur Sinodinas in his opening statements, which he didn't, you'd concede that. Surely that is politically a, a, an enormous distraction for this government and one you don't need. So we'll allow the media and the Labor Party to be judge and jury? Come on, Kieran. Look, there are no substantive allegations or evidence of wrongdoing against Arthur. He is a person of utmost integrity and he is being slandered by this campaign, by the Labor Party, and obviously it has been taken up in the media. But it's, I, it's ICAC that mentioned his name sure. and did not exonerate him in those opening statements. But he hasn't had a... They're, 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 you're right about the, you know, the suggestion that he has not had any concrete allegation against him levelled by the ICAC, but they didn't exonerate him either, did they? Well, he hasn't had his day before the ICAC. But they and did exonerate others, that's the point. They've hung him out to dry, have they not? No. By just mentioning him and not clearing him. Look, look, Kieran, Arthur is a person of utmost integrity and decency. He will be fully vindicated. Most importantly of all, he's a valued member of Tony Abbott's front bench. Uh, he's doing really important work in the superannuation space, in the tax space. In fact, today on, uh, on, in the Parliament, we're introducing some of his legislation to reduce the compliance cost uh, for the financial services sector with the uh, Labor Party's FOFA laws. Um, look, Can he, he still he do that, though? Yeah, absolutely. Can, can you do that credibly while your name is being mentioned at the ICAC in Sydney, the corruption inquiry into that company, Australian Water Holdings. He's the former chairman of it. While he might be entirely innocent, as you say, mm -hmm. as you believe he is, mm -hmm. can you credibly still go through all these financial planning reforms and so on while there's a question mark there? And clearly there's still a question mark at ICAC, if, no, if nowhere else. Well, Kieran, we absolutely uh, look to Arthur Sinodinas for his leadership and for you know, his valued advice in this important area. He is the man for the job and he has the support of everyone in the coalition. And like I said, this is a person of utmost integrity and decency. There is no evidence whatsoever of wrongdoing against Arthur Sinodinas. He will participate in the ICAC hearings and he will be fully vindicated. Well, but again, I put to you, and, and, and as I say, you might be proven 100% right, but at the moment, do you concede that there's a question mark hanging over the Assistant Treasurer, which has been put there by ICAC and the Council assisting? I don't believe there is a question mark over Arthur Sinodinas because there is no evidence of wrongdoing doing here and he is somebody who will be fully vindicated and will hang tough with him. Like I said, I'd love to be in the trenches with one person, that is Arthur Sinodinas, and we'll be in the trenches with him. He said, the council assisting, that it's difficult to make a, a, de a definitive statement one way or the other when it comes to Arthur Sinodinas and his role in all of this. That was the thrust of what he said. So he clearly, again, I put to you, mm. raised a question mark over this man that you obviously have great loyalty to, but ICAC has put a question mark over his, his position. Should he not stand aside at least, not resign, but stand aside until the inquiry's done? It's more than loyalty. It's confidence in Arthur Sinodinus's integrity and in his behaviour, and it's based on the facts we have which is that there is no evidence of any wrongdoing against Arthur Zinedine. So you can ask me 12 more times. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's, let's move on because you're going to give me the same answer every time. But I will put to you this, mm -hmm. that we have focused on this issue because obviously it's a 
very significant importance, mm -hmm. and not on the red tape issue. You can. This is obviously an unhelpful distraction for the government right now as you're trying to focus on your deregulation agenda, isn't it? Well, I'm very happy with the coverage we're getting for our red tape agenda because it's critically important, Kieran. The Labor Party bequeathed us 21,000 additional regulations. Australia had falling productivity under the Labor Party. In fact, Australia's ranking out of 148 countries for the overall regulatory burden was a pitiful 128. Okay, no, I, I, I do want to go into detail sure. of that in just a moment, but finally on the ICAC, do you, do you <laughs> think that they've handled it appropriately, ICAC, and the way they've they mentioned the I'm assistant gonna, treasurer? Look, you know, that's a respected body. It's got its legal processes. I'm not going to question that. But I am going to stand side by side with Arthur Sinodinos and all my coalition colleagues in saying he is a person of the utmost okay. integrity. Well, on the deregulation agenda, is this simply going after the low-hanging fruit today? Not at all. I mean, look, we've announced, for example, the Comcare system changes to allow companies that operate in multiple jurisdictions to self-insure uh, through the National Comcare Scheme. Now, that will lead to a saving in terms of compliance burden of more than $30 million. That will be opposed, I'm sure, by the Labor Party because they're beholden to the union movement. Um, other changes that we are introducing, for example, to the Personal Property Security Act, which will make it um, easier for hire firms who at the moment are falling under a huge amount of red tape compliance when they have to register serial goods that they lend out for more than 90 days. I hope that is supported by the Labor Party. Um, some of the other silly pieces of regulation where you know, a film like Kung Fu Panda that comes into Australia on 2D, 3D, DVD and Blu-ray currently has to be classified four times at great expense. Well, I ask you about so I'm hoping the Labor Party supports Let me ask you about the financial plan, is, uh, the move on that. It's going to be well, that's done, controversial. It's going to be done by regulation. So w w well, what, what do you say to Matthew Rowe, the, the, uh, the chairman of the Financial Planning Association, who was on the ABC last night, he said, I don't believe it's in the best interests of consumers. I think it's a retrograde step. This is the reintroduction of the abilities of uh, planners, financial planners, to accept commissions. Well, there are plenty of other... Uh, views out there, like a John Brogdon, Brogdon, head of the Financial Services Council, who pointed to the fact that Labor's laws, Kieran, had a $700 million implementation cost and a $375 million compliance burden. Now, you can't expect the financial planners to absorb that amount of additional cost through Labor's reforms without passing it on to consumers. So we're about getting the balance right. Well, we don't want another storm financial collapse. You, so we, you, we want you the balance this, right. Will you do this via regulation? Well, there's a piece of legislation going forward today on that. So it won't be via regulation? Well, in terms of the changes to FOFA, you'll see a piece of legislation today. You'll see a dozen pieces of legislation. We're getting rid of more than 10,000 acts and regulations. Uh, some of them have been on the statute books for a long time. Some are more recent. But the reason I ask you about that sure. legislation v regulation is because yeah. if it was by regulation, the Senate moved to dis allow it yeah. before the mid-year, yeah. you could have financial planners facing three different regimes in a couple of months. Well, look, debacle. we want certainty for the financial planning system, but we also want lower compliance, and we want better regulation, not more regulation. Labor gave us more regulation. We want better regulation. Labor says it, it cut regulation. Well, uh, yeah. Chris Bowen says they did it <laughs> without the fanfare. You know, there's this great quote from Craig Emerson back in 2008 when he was the small business minister, Kieran, when he said, I'm taking the scissors to cut red tape for small business. He gave us 21,000 additional regulations and we have in place now under the Abbott government mandated regulatory impact statements. So you go out there and you consult, you do the costings, you see what compliance burdens are going to be imposed by new regulations before you do it. Under Labor, would you believe, Kieran, the carbon tax, the mining tax, the changes to the Fair Work Act, the NBN, um, FOFA, they were all exempted by Prime Ministers Rudd and Gillard from the regulatory impact right. statement. Let, let me ask you finally about one last issue, the re repeal of 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act. Mm -hmm. Yesterday in, the, par in uh, the party room, Liberal MP Ken White said that he might have to cross the floor over this issue. He was supported in his concerns by Craig Laundy, by David Coleman, mm -hmm. by Philip Ruddock. A, a large a number of community groups, including the Jewish community, mm -hmm. are opposed to repealing Section 18C. Mm -hmm. 
which is basically making illegal um, the ability to offend or insult mm -hmm. or humiliate someone based on racial grounds. Mm -hmm. What's well, the, your view? Well, my view is we do need to amend 18C, but we need to get the balance right. And uh, Tony Abbott has made the point, we're all against racial vilification and racism. We're all in favour of freedom of speech, but we also believe that Andrew Bolt shouldn't have been caught up by those laws as they were particularly framed. So I think George Brandis has gone about handling this issue extremely well. I know he's participated in extensive briefings and meetings with the various constituencies and community groups and stakeholders. But on what, basis is, and it, on, what, on what basis is it okay to offend, insult, humiliate or intimidate someone on racial grounds? On, well, on what it, basis, what occasion is that okay? Well, it's not okay to go too far. But what is OK is to allow a certain amount of freedom of speech. And one of the criticisms of 18C, Kieran, is the so-called hurt feelings test. That if somebody is hurt by something, then that should be outlawed and there should be a criminal subject. Well, I, you know, let, let's just wait, wait and see as to where Tony Abbott, George Brandis and the party room come out on this. You're right, there are differing views. Uh, you mentioned some of the people who you know, were cautioning about change. There are plenty of others who were saying, you know, we but do are they, need to are change they, are those against change, those that are saying they need to change it, uh, you, you know from your experience sure. and your, you know, your community, background, sure. your background, that they're fiercely opposed to this. Sure. You must be receiving a lot of representations about that. I'm like every one of my fellow members in the party room who have been spoken to by uh, different constituents and groups who do have views on this issue. It's a hard one, Kieran, we did take to the election a commitment to, um, to look at this issue and to act on this issue um, and to repeal it in its current form. I think that was the, form, the, the use of the words. Um, George Brandis has been meticulous. He hasn't rushed into any announcement or decision. He's consulting the Prime Minister. He's consulting his colleagues, the ones that you mentioned who spoke in the party room. And I'm very um, confident that he'll be able to get the balance right. Josh Frydenberg, thanks for your time. Lovely to be with a you. A quick break. And in just a moment, Ed Husig, my guest, stay with